Hello everyone. Um, I'm horrible with video and audio skills and stuff, so I'm going to give it my best shot to put my 30 minute audio recording on video because some of you would prefer to watch video than listen to just audio, so I'm going to give it a shot. Here it goes. Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Johnson, and I want to share an awesome recording with you that will blow your mind. I'm still processing it nonstop. Um, for those of you who are familiar with my journey, you're aware of the fact that my family and I encountered a Bigfoot on the mountain above the Oregon Caves on July 1st, 2000. That I did 10 years of old school research thinking that they were descendants of Gigantopithecus, dumb giant mountain apes, and that we could bait them, trap them, capture them, um, and, you know, that just didn't pan out, just like it's never panned out for anybody else out there viewing them that way and going after them that way. Well, after 10 years of doing that and the fact that I'm a psychologist, a problem solver by nature, I decided to try an alternative approach. There was this wacky group out there um, who were interactionists, habituators, experiencers, and they viewed the Bigfoot forest people as uh, intelligent uh, species, uh, sentient beings, and not dumb giant mountain apes. And they suggested that um, we approach them like they're people. So I did a transitional thing by, you know, doing a habituation approach and kind of uh, adapted some of um, Dr. Jane Goodall's approach with chimps to, you know, working with um, the Bigfoot Sasquatch species. And so I would put out, instead of baiting them like dumb giant mountain apes, I'd put out gifting bowls and um, put food in there and try to, you know, curry their favor and earn their trust. And it took a while. After five years of continually presenting food, they finally started taking my food. I was getting fingerprints, palm prints, saliva samples. I had multiple witnesses with me out there seeing the same thing I was seeing. Visuals on the perimeter, vocals. If you scroll down in this SoundCloud.com account of mine, Team Squatching USA, and start with the oldest audio recording and work your way up, you'll experience the um, journey. And also, if you go to the YouTube channel, Team Squatch in USA, and scroll down to the oldest video and work your way up from there, you'll experience the journey that way too. Anyway, all that eventually led to a whole lot of interactions, more witnesses coming along with me, which eventually led to the discovery of a portal in the Southern Oregon habituation area, otherwise known as SOA. Adam Davies and John Carlson were involved in that. They're the ones that actually discovered the portal. Uh, Grady saw it, I saw it. Um, took me a year to figure it out, but I figured out how to reopen the portal. I had 10 witnesses with me over a couple months reopening it, doing some um, experiments with it. In October of 2015, I had Andrea Billups up at SOA with me, and we had a whole lot of activity. You can listen to those audio recordings below. It's pretty cool stuff. I had to take her back to the hotel near the airport so she could get back home and get to work. And I went up to SOA for one more night. That following morning, I was packing up my truck and I was, um, <clears throat> again, I was asking if I could have a teacher. I had been asking for a long time, can I have a teacher? I want to learn. Can you give me a teacher? And then I had this very strong mind speak. You're our teacher. That's why we bring our kids to you. Uh, you're our teacher. And that blew me away. Well, the following month, I was up at so with Mike Kincaid, and Mike Kincaid experienced the healing. And I had also experienced the healing earlier with a huge blood clot that went from my left groin to my knee and the cardiovascular surgeon said I should be dead, I should be dead, I should be dead, and he was just blown away that I wasn't. So anyway, that's when we were starting out, wow, they can heal. 
So the last night that Mike Kincaid and I were at SOA, um, I was laying on my cot. It was around four in the morning. I woke up and I sleep with a hoodie over my head and a t-shirt over my eyes. And I could hear my um, guardian standing at the head of my cot, shifting the weight of the feet, breathing. And in my mind, I asked, are you still there? And instead of responding telepathically, he walked between me and the truck where the parabolic microphone dish was, just five feet away from my cot. And he leaned over and said in my ear, yes, right here beside you. And you can listen to that audio recording if you scroll down a little bit. It should say yes right here beside you. Check that out. Pretty freaking awesome. So I asked telepathically, mind speak, are you still there? And instead of responding telepathically, he answered audibly, yes, right here beside you. So then the trolls crashed SOA in December of 2015, and we got moved to Soya. And it was six months later, in June of 2016, that we were able to help the Bigfoot Forest people who refer to themselves as the Janu. We were able to help them with the Exodus. And again, you want to go to the YouTube channel and um, go to the four-part video series, The Great Reveal. And you want to watch that four-part video series to understand more of what I'm talking about. But essentially, the Council of Twelve, which consists of two elders from each habitable continent, met with myself, Mike and Kate, Steve Bachman, on top of the Council of Twelve Hill, and Zorth is the leader of the Council of Twelve, and um, he had introduced himself to me earlier, prior to June of 2016, said his name in my ear and was massaging my head with a hand that <laughs> on my head, about two or three times the size of my hand. I'm 6'9", I, I can palm a basketball, but his hand just was humongous. So anyway, but very kind, very gentle. And, and he said, Zorth, in my ear, and it was like, whoa. So anyway, the exodus occurred in June of 2016, and we helped 23,542 souls come from their dying world to Earth, minus three souls that died within an hour of less or less upon their arrival. Um, which was very sad, but also very happy that they got to die with family and friends on earth. So, yay, mission accomplished, mystery solved. Um, learned a lot about who the Janu really are. And again, watch the um, four-part video series, The Great Reveal. After the exodus was over, the Council of Twelve and Zorth asked me to be 13, asked me to be their ambassador to start teaching others about the um, Janu. Again, that's what the Bigfoot forest people refer to themselves as, the Janu. They wanted me to be 13. The cool thing was, just around the time of the Exodus, Kevin Beagle and his wife Samara were over in Ireland, and they were hiking through the woods, and Kevin said that a tree was communicating with him telepathically and told him that when he got back to the States, he needed to get a hold of Matt Johnson. So that was weird for them, but he came back to the States, he got a hold of me. Well, he didn't know anything about the Exodus. He didn't know anything about the Council of Twelve. He didn't know that the Council of Twelve asked me to be 13. But he got a hold of me and said a tree asked him to get a hold of me. And... For those of you that are familiar with the story, the Janu are really orbs, beings of light, and during the day, they go into the trees to soak up the energy from the sun, the nutrients from the roots and the ground, and then at night they come out and they shapeshift into physical beings. So people say, well, are they spiritual or flesh and blood? As if it's an either-or scenario. It's not an either-or, it's a both-and. They're both spiritual and flesh and blood, not either-or. It's both-and. They're both. So anyway, Kevin didn't know that. So he got a hold of me. I invited him immediately to come to Soya. He came down with his wife and some other people. And everyone kind of walked around when we got there. And usually people, when they walk around, they want to make sure I, there's no equipment out there where I'm hoaxing people visually or 
audibly, I expect that people check the perimeter of the camp to make sure that I don't have equipment set up and once they come back. Then they confessed to me that that's what they were doing and I know that's what they were doing because so many people did it before and told me afterwards that's what they were doing. So anyway, Kevin was the first one back to camp and he sat down and he said I was up there on that hill and a tree started talking to me and said something about 12 and that you're 13. What does that mean? Well, again, he didn't know anything about the Exodus. He didn't know anything about the Council of Twelve. He didn't know that the Council of Twelve and Zorth asked me to be 13, asked me to be the ambassador, asked me to teach others about the Janu, and the fact that Zorth asked me to teach everybody and tell everybody that we're in the trees and the trees are everywhere. We're not in every tree, but we're in the trees and the trees are everywhere, all over Earth. And culturally, if you do your research, lots of cultures around the planet have um, folklore, myth and legend about tree spirits and orbs and trees. So makes sense to me. You know, Kevin didn't know that. So I shared the story about the Exodus with them and about the fact that uh, Council 12 asked me to be 13, asked me to be the ambassador. And it blew him away, blew me away. Just it was pretty incredible. And so um, that's what I've been doing. The other thing that, you know, Zorth wanted me to teach, and, and I do, is if kind people with good hearts and open minds reach out to us, we'll reach back to them. So that's the criteria. Kind people, good hearts, open minds. So when they reach out to the Janu, the Janu reach back. And that's why Cynthia and I have five months in a row um, hosted uh, weekend night sits and sleepovers so people could come and experience all that and learn how to reach out to the Janu and people have been getting healed, they're going back home uh, what one knows they all know, what one feels they all feel so they get on the radar, they get on the Janu radar when they come to our house and then they go back home and they're locals because what one knows they all know, what one feels they all feel when they get back home they're locals start interacting with them. It's really cool. Got story after story after story after story of that happening and people getting healed and more people getting healed, getting healed from kidney stones, leukemia, cancer, heart problems, vision problems, blood clots. It goes on and on and on. Uh, sciatic nerve pain goes on and on and on. By the way, there's no guarantee if people come here that they will get healed. But so far, the stats are pretty high that people are getting healed. Sometimes the healing process begins on a property and then is followed up by locals when people go back home. Um, we've had people go back home to Canada with ongoing activity, go back home to England with ongoing activity. It's, it's been mind-blowing. So anyway, on Thursday... August 30th, 2018, I took my 11-year-old son Grady and his 11-year-old friend Russell up to Soya, the Southern Oregon Interaction Area, up in the mountains in Southern Oregon. We were going up there to camp for two nights. We were going to camp uh, Thursday night and Friday night. And so we got up there on Thursday and we set up camp and we have our chairs and what we have nicknamed the living room. And it kind of faces the alcove, that, which we call a 12 o'clock position on the perimeter. And then we um, have our cots, our sleeping cots, set up over in what we nicknamed the bedroom, which is about 50, 60 feet away from the chairs. I have avoided all the stuff I was doing in SOA at Soya. I was not putting up gifting bowls, not recording, not doing anything because this is about interaction. But recently, Zorth has been asking me to record at our property in Chehalis, which we call the Chehalis Interaction Area, otherwise known as the CIA, kind of just a playful fun for an acronym. Um, so I've been recording on our property at the CIA, Chehalis Interaction Area, getting some pretty freaking incredible audios. Again, scroll down on SoundCloud, listen to them. From 
they'll be um, prefaced with CIA. And um, I have them, one of the cool things is recorded saying Grady. <laughs> I took my recorder down to the Southern Oregon interaction area, Soya, and I was so tired that morning when I packed up, I forgot to pack the parabolic microphone dish. So I just had my um, Sony digital recorder. I left that on the chair in the living room, recorded there without the parabolic microphone dish. The boys went to bed, the boys were exhausted. They went to bed at 9 p.m and they were out. I'm sitting in the base camp, pitch dark at night, all by myself. We have a no lights policy, no lanterns, no campfire, no flashlights, and I'm sitting there in the dark, and I'm playing my music with my MP3 player and my portable Bose speaker. All of a sudden, looking straight ahead at 12 o'clock in the, the cove area, uh, Mogu starts walking towards me in his shimmering image, good eight feet tall, heads, arms, legs, and he sticks his hand out toward me. So I stick mine toward his, he touches my hand, and this energy goes up my arm and lights up my central nervous system. And then, all of a sudden, I start seeing little ones and medium-sized ones and tall ones. They're all coming in for like a big party. And orbs were everywhere, popping lights. And I would play music and... I know this sounds crazy, but I swear to God this is true. They were dancing to the music. And I look over toward the cots while all this is going on, and Zorth is over there, all 10 feet of him, in his shimmering image, except his shimmering image was kind of a, a faint glowing red, and he's kind of waving his hands over Russell and over Grady. I'm just going, well, that's pretty cool. He's over there for about a half hour, and he occasionally look at me and smile. I, I play three songs and I stop, and then I play three songs and I stop, and I'm getting tired, and you know, I need to go to bed. And so I say, okay guys, thanks so much. This was like awesome. It hadn't been that active as far as I experienced since the night of the Exodus, right? So it was like, wow, this is like one major party. So I'm like, I gotta go to bed, and then I get this strong mind speak, no, no, three more songs, play three more songs. So I'm like, okay, I'll play three more songs, and then I'm going to bed. So I played three more songs, and there was more dancing and movement, and it was just incredible. And I wish you could have been there to see it, because it was going on. It was a big old party, and it was just me, just me there. So I'm done with my three songs, and I say, love you guys, thanks so much. I'm going to bed. Turn the recorder on, I go to bed. I fall asleep, and the recorder records all night long. You know, there's activity off and on during the night. There's some tree taps or not. There's some vocals and footsteps and stuff like that going on. But when you record for 8, 10, 12 hours, and I've listened to hundreds of hours, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of audio recordings, when you come back home, you've got to listen to all 8, 10, 12 hours of every night you record. You can't just run it through the laptop looking for the spikes because what I have learned over the years is that the audio gold nuggets are actually in the valleys. They're not usually in the spikes. They're in the valleys in between the spikes. So if all you do is skip forward for the spikes and you skip the valleys, you're missing some really potentially important audio gold nuggets. I've learned over the years, don't skip ahead, just be patient and listen to everything. And yes, that takes a long time and it takes serious commitment. And again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours and again, scroll down and, and you'll listen to all those gold nuggets that I've gotten over the years. I was patiently listening and then I caught, I caught this faint sentence with four words. And I recognized the voice. It, it was Zorth. It was Zorth's audible voice. 
And so I use the software to amplify the sound and then I played it again and my jaw dropped. Played it again, jaw still dropping. I had Cynthia listen to it and her jaw dropped and played it again and she's just like, whoa. And I said, are you hearing what I'm hearing? And we both said the same thing. And it was like, whoa. And then I sent it to a gentleman for audio cleanup because um, I really don't have any video or audio skills. And, you know, he did his best to clean it up. So I have it um, here for you to listen to. What I have is I have the original faint sound. And then I have it followed by my work with trying to amplify the sound. And then I've added the other gentleman's cleanup work. So you're going to hear the original, then my amplified version, and then this other gentleman's cleaned up version. So you're going to hear original, amplified, cleanup. And then again, original, amplified, cleanup, original, amplified, cleanup. Um, and you can feel free to rewind it and listen to it as many times as you want. But I figured if I did it three times for you, I would save you some rewinding. But essentially, what it says, or, or what Zorth said, was, Hail to my son. Hail to my son. And I'm like, what the heck? And so, you know, Zorth and I, I've shared, I've been pretty upfront and honest about this, open and honest. Zorth and I have an ongoing open calm, and Zorth made it clear that I'm the only human that he will communicate with. He's the head of the Council of Twelve, pretty much makes him the president of the planet. He doesn't have time to communicate with everybody else. People can communicate with their locals. But he and I have an open calm, because I'm 13, the ambassador, and helped out with the exodus. So Zorth says, hail to my son. And so I get home and I listen to it. And so I'm asking him, what, what does this mean? Are you talking about Mogdu, who is his oldest son, Tuquaz, also his son? And he goes, no, I'm talking about you. Okay, so that blows me away. And I'm going, well, you're not my father, you know. <laughs> you, you and my mom didn't get it on, so to speak. And he goes, no, no, no. He said, you're my adopted son. Hail to my son. We had an adoption party for you Thursday night. That was a celebration that you were being adopted into my family as one of my sons. You are not just 13, the ambassador, but you are also now one of my sons. That's why I said, hail to my son. <laughs> to confirm the adoption. You are now one of my sons. All I can say is, I'm blown away. First of all, to be asked to be 13 and the ambassador after the, <sighs> you know, running into Bigfoot on the mountain above the Oregon Caves, which turned out to be Zorth, which he told me about after the Exodus was over. And then, you know, the portal and the Exodus, and it just keeps on giving. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but you're going to listen to this, the original recording, the amplified recording, the cleaned up recording, and it's going to cycle through. So I save you some rewinding, but you'll probably want to rewind anyway, because it's freaking awesome. And it's clearly Zor's voice, which I've heard before. And he says, hail to my son. Um, I'm now not just 13, the ambassador, but I'm also adopted 
by Zorth into his family as one of his sons. What a privilege, what an honor, blows me away. And um, I just had to share that with you. So um, kick on back and um, enjoy. Now let's listen to it again. And now one last time. So there you have it, um, the auto recording of Zorth saying four words in English, Hail to my son, which was his way of confirming the adoption process, the big party that they had in my honor, which I didn't even realize <laughs> was a party in my honor. I just thought it was just a big gathering. And so I'm just blown away and I'm honored. And um, we've been having awesome experiences during our monthly um, weekend night sits and sleepovers. Next year, we're not going to do five months. We're just going to cut it down to three months. We'll be doing June, July, and August. And instead of shooting for 20 people, we're going to shoot for 30 plus people to attend those events. All we charge is for food. We don't charge any other money besides covering the cost of, you know, your meals. We're not into this to make, you know, money. It's not why we do this. We're in this to teach people and to help people connect with the Janu. And the Janu hope to connect with humans one person at a time. Once again, kind person, good heart, open mind. And they want to help us reconnect with God, reconnect with one another, and reconnect with the planet that God gave us to be good stewards of. That's it. Pretty simple message. Kind people, good hearts, open minds, reach out to us. We reach back trying to help us reconnect with God, with one another, and with the planet God gave us to be good stewards over. It doesn't get any simpler than that. The KISS method, keep it simple, silly. I can't wait to see what else happens, what else <laughs> comes up down the road, because the surprises never end. I have always been an open book and honest ever since my family's encounter on July 1st, 2000, and I will continue to be an open book and be honest, no matter how crazy it sounds, and I do understand that this does sound freaking crazy. I get it. But if you actually take the time to scroll down and listen to all the audio recordings from the oldest to the newest, and if you take the time to go to the YouTube channel, scroll down and watch my oldest video all the way to the newest, you'll see that I've had over 200 witnesses involved in this whole process. So we're not all liars. We're not all insane. We're not all hoaxers. Bottom line is, it's very real. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's very real. And I will continue to be an open, honest book until my dying day. I hope you um, get something out of this, and I hope you get something out of the other audio recordings and the YouTube videos. I am going to bring this to an end. I hope you have a great day. If you have yet to join our Team Squatch in USA Facebook group, please feel free to do so. We'd love to um, have you come in and interact with you. This is Dr. Johnson 
signing off.